Right, welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic. So if you've got yourself a bike related problem, no matter what it is, make sure you leave it down there in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer it in an upcoming episode. Alternatively, leave me those questions on all forms of social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. With no further ado, it's time to crack on with the first question this week. And it comes in from, in fact, I'm just gonna read out your surname because I can't, definitely can't say your first name. It comes in from Wu. Hi John, I really like the show. I've been following your advice by washing my bike with soapy water each week. After washing my bike, I just let the bike air dry. Recently, I noticed that both my cassette and chain started to rust. Did I wash it too often or is it because I let my bike dry in the air. Also, will soapy water contaminate the disc brake pads? Uh, right, it is good practice to wash your bike, which is absolutely great. I'm glad you're doing it. Something else you could well do, unless of course it's really hot. Uh, a lot of water droplets they tend to just hang around on the bike. So get yourself an old towel, certainly not one that uh, you're gonna use after you have a shower and just run the chain through that and also the sprockets too and try and wipe away as much excess water as possible. If you've got some compressed air, so an air hose, blast that in there too. That does a fantastic job of getting rid of any water particles, as does products such as, I don't know, uh, I think it's called Bike Protect from Muck Off or some of the products from WD-40, some of the bike specific ones. You can spray that on the drivetrain afterwards and it just makes sure that water goes away and it doesn't start to give you that surface rust, which isn't that nice. As for soapy water, contaminating disc brake pads, no, as long as you rinse it off with some clean water afterwards. Hopefully, you're gonna be rust-free from now on. Next up is Samuel Lee, who says, Hi GCN Tech, I got a 10-speed Ultegra 6770 Di2 group set, and I want to upgrade it to 11-speed. Is it fine to just upgrade the rear derailleur cassette, junction box chain, and leave the rest as it is? Some people say there is gonna be a firmware compatibility issue, but others say it will work fine. So I'm just a bit confused. Right, Samuel, you're gonna need the front derailleur too. The reason being an 11 speed rear derailleur and 10 speed front derailleur, they don't talk the same language in, uh, that's my technical speak really for them just not working together. They used to work at first, but once you plug in and upgrade your firmware or update it to make sure you've got you know, the latest operating gears, if that makes sense, they just will not work. And it's very likely that the new rear derailleur is gonna come pre-programmed to not work with an old front derailleur. So yeah, you are gonna to need to get both of those mechs. Right, we've got Cafe Con Lecce 81 now. Uh, hello John, I've been having some issues with my rear derailleur skipping. Took it to a bike shop mechanic and it came down to needing to replace it. That's always a sad day. Uh, I have a SRAM Red 22 rear derailleur, the green edition, and would like to replace it with the same green edition model, but it seems impossible to find it anywhere. Is there any way to service or rebuild the old one, or does it need to be replaced? If so, any suggestions where I can find it for a fair price? <sighs> All right, this is an absolute drama, really, because you've got your heart set on this limited edition green component tree, or green decals on it and it's eventually worn out and it's not gonna match anything else. If you've got OCD like me, this is not a good situation. But you could probably rebuild that rear derailleur. Have a look on the SRAM website. They've got a whole heap of spare parts that you can look around at and probably buy every single component to rebuild it and have it working just like new. Alternatively, the um, probably more time efficient process would be to go out and buy a new one, but it's not gonna match all those green components. So you could then go to a sticker or decal uh, shop and try and get them to make something that you could just put over the uh, white or red writing that could well be on that new derailleur. Alternatively, take it to someone who's gonna paint it on and then they could just lacquer over the top there. But there's a few solutions or suggestions for you. Right, next up is Carl Cook who says, Hi John, obviously I upgraded my chain to an 11 speed KMC in gold. Good man, Carl. Uh, I also bought an ultrasonic cleaner with the intention to keep all my cassettes and chains gleaming. I'm starting to like you a lot, actually, Carl. Um, with the KMC chain, do I really need a fresh quick link every time I want to remove it to clean it, or am I missing something? Right, Carl, first up, good job that you're taking care of that bling. And I've got some really good news for you, because some of those KMC quick links, they are classed as a one-use bit of kit. But even better news, or well, really the news for you, let's face it, is that some of them are reusable. So have a look on the KMC website and you'll be able to find one which is exactly what you need for your needs. Because I don't know, uh, the, you know the, the model of that 10-speed or 11-speed chain you've got, an 11-speed, I did have to just check. 
but have a look on there. You may even be able to get a different colored one too to really make it stand out and look really cool. But I think it's absolutely great that you're doing what I love to do and that's take off the chain and give it a proper deep clean. You can just get it way more clean uh, by taking it off the bike than if you leave it in place. Right, we've got Olivier Heroes next. Hi John, almighty bike wizard. I could do with a beard and a hat. No, I couldn't. Uh, I cannot find a real definitive answer to this question. Are the Shimano SPDSL cleats compatible with the Vector 3 power meter pedals by Garmin? Thanks a lot in advance for your help, Ollie. Now, Ollie, note those Shimano SPDSL cleats are a different size and slightly different shape to the Look Kio ones, which are compatible with those Garmin Vector pedals. So that's exactly what you're gonna have to use. Don't try and use anything else and try and bodge your way around it or anything like that. When it comes to having a pedal uh, interface with your cleat, you want it to be absolutely spot on. You don't want to risk pulling out of those pedals when you're dropping down those wattage bazookas. Next up is Violin Freaks. I have to ask, where do you lot get your usernames from? Some of them are really normal. And Violin Freaks, I don't know. Oh, anyway, right. Hi John, love the show. I have the opportunity to get an almost new Shimano 6800 Ultegra group set, uh, the shifters front and rear derailleurs, for a quite good price. Now, I currently have a Shimano 6600 group set on the bike. The crank set is a 6700 one. Can I keep the crank set or will I also have to buy a 6800 one? Thanks in advance. Keep that crank set, don't spend any money just yet. You will be able to have absolutely fine working gears. They're not gonna be quite as crisp as if you had a 6800 chain set on there because the uh, spacing of the chain rings have ever so slightly moved over the years as we've gone from 10 to 11 speed and everything. But I've used um, a chain set from sort of three or four generations ago with the latest generation of group set, so uh, derailleurs, and it's worked absolutely fine. So what, like I said, you're not gonna get the spot on gear shifting, but it's gonna be okay. Good news. Right, we've got Concept DLX now. Uh, I've just got a new Focus Izalco Max and I'm not able to prevent the aero seat post from creaking. No matter how much carbon paste I use, it does not want to stop. Do you have any advice for me? Yeah, uh, firstly, make sure that it is the actual seat post that's creaking. So it may not be, it's actually creaking down there inside of the frame, unless of course you've held onto that seat post and you've managed to get it to creak while trying to move it around. I would check firstly that the saddle to uh, seat clamp or seat cradle on the top of the seat post, that that is absolutely tight too, so it's talked up correctly. And also maybe if you've got carbon rails on that saddle, use some carbon paste there too. Alternatively, use some copper paste or some anti-seize, something like that. Make sure that all the bolts are greased and lubed correctly. And like I say, they, they are talked up, including that seat clamp bolt there too. Um, and you say you've used a lot of carbon paste, actually make sure that it's down far enough inside of the frame too. So maybe you're gonna to have to put some on, I don't know, a tool of some sort, maybe a long screwdriver, and just make sure it's you know around the circumference of that seat post too. Because sometimes when you push a seat post in, you just see it come back up the seat post and it doesn't go down inside of the actual seat tube itself. Krunt is next, and Krunt says, I own a Stevens from about 1999 with a Tiagra 4400 group set. I love the handmade small aluminium frame and want to recreate the GCN cheap bike. How do I attach a 105 R5800 braze on front derailleur? Which clamp do I need? Krunt, my friend, you're gonna need a braze on adapter. So what is this exactly? Well, it's simply a clamp which goes around the outside of your seat tube, and then you can bolt that braze on front derailleur in place. As for the diameter, because they do come in different sizes, you are gonna to need to get yourself uh, a pair of calipers or a micrometer, something like that, and actually just measure the outside diameter of your seat tube to make sure that you get the correct mounting bracket. But it's gonna be an absolute piece of cake. And I look forward actually to seeing that bike once you've done the rebuild. Now we've got George Duffy. Now that is the kind of username I like. It's simple, it's your name. Anyway, right, so George says, I ride an older uh, specialized tarmac and find I can get quite a bit of brake rub on the rear wheel when climbing or really putting the power down. Uh, being around 85 kilo and on the stronger side, I expect a bit of flex in my wheels, but the other day when cleaning my bike, I noticed that the paint is getting worn on my frame in where the rear stays are meeting the bottom bracket. So the wheels are rubbing there too. It's made me wonder, is it the wheel or is it the frame flexing? How can I figure out what the culprit is? Right, George, it could be either that are flexing. 
Could be that your wheels have uh, had a bit of tension drop from the spokes, so maybe they just need tightening up a little bit to try and keep them slightly more in line. Also, is it rubbing just on one side or on both sides? If it's just on one side, sounds like possibly the wheel isn't in correctly or the dish isn't okay. Uh, if it's on both sides, could well be you're running two wider tires for the dropouts. Uh, sorry, for the actual chain stays uh, to accommodate. Uh, and lastly, and this isn't a good one really, it could be that you've got a small crack in your frame and it's just allowing the wheel to just flex and whip around a bit too much. But without actually seeing it, it's really hard to give a definite answer. I'll check all those things. If in doubt, then pop down to your local bike shop and see what they've got to say about it. And the last question this week comes in from iRacecraft, who says, Dear John, I love to read almost as much as I love to cycle. Are there any books you would recommend to make me a better bike mechanic? Oh, wow, well, Roger Moore, My Word is My Bond, that's a good book. It's not going to help you with your bike mechanics, but I'm a big Roger Moore fan, so I would suggest reading that. Right, as for books and becoming a better mechanic, Generally, books are great for learning the theory, but when it comes to the practical side of things, which is what we're gonna be doing on our bikes, they're not that good. And with new components and new bits and pieces always being released, you're never gonna be really up to date. What I did and what how I learned and how every mechanic I think I know learn is actually by tinkering around with your own bike. You make a few mistakes, you fix those mistakes, and then it's like an evolution of the whole process. Um, Something you could do actually is pop along to your local scrapyard or try and buy a cheap secondhand bike if you don't want to go and go around and like you know play on your favourite bike and then actually learn from that bike because you're not going to get too upset if you do make a mistake. Say for instance if you're going to be building wheels, that kind of thing. Right, hopefully that'll be okay for you. But there are some great manuals out there like the Park Tool, they've got a big blue bible as I like to call it, and that has loads and loads of information inside of it that could well help you. Right, I hope I've been able to help answer and solve your problem this week. If not, as ever, leave it down there in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to help answer it in an upcoming episode. And then, well, you know what this drill is by now. Remember to like and share this video with your friends. Don't forget as well to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got heaps of goodies for you to check out. And now, for two great maintenance videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here.